Hello everyone, my name is Kanakshila Tandon. I go by Kanak. Uh, today I'm here to talk about B2B and B2C uh, PME. So I start with a quick intro uh, for, for everyone. I actually have around 20 years of experience and most of it is as a product manager. I worked in B2B space. I also worked in B2C space. So here I am to share my experiences that I have gone through and some tips and strategy. Uh, I start with a quick intro. Um, I have worked in past. I have worked with companies like um, like uh, Microsoft, HP, Meta, a um, bunch of startups. I founded my company um, also at the point of time. And uh, I started in PM space in 2006. So I would say what kept me into PMing is probably um, the notion of tapping into um, unknown territories. Um, and then carving something out from those ambiguous, uh, you know, situations, carving something out which is uh, going to solve a crucial problem uh, for the customers. This is what kept me going. Um, and with that, I'm going to delve into the topic that we are going to discuss today, which is B2B versus B2C PMing. Just give me a minute. Let me share my screen um, quickly. I already covered the intro. So, okay. Uh, the three topics I would be touching today. One is if you are an amateur PM and uh, you are just starting your journey and you are trying to figure out what suits me more, B2B and B2C space. This is something I would be talking through. Then we'll go through some cultural differences between B2B and B2C organizations. And then I will share some strategies based on my experience, how to innovate and lead in B2, BPMing. So with that, uh, let's move ahead. So first, let's talk about, this is, this is a very light slide. Let, let's talk about what is common uh, between these two. So the underlying PM principles, I listed a few here, are common in both the uh, both the areas. So these are the overlapping, uh, you know, regions. Uh, for example, identifying the problem. Um, identifying the right problem is the start of, of a successful product and that paves the path for the right product market fit. So irrespective of whether you are in B2B and B2C, uh, that is going to be the same. Uh, customer empathy, the ability to feel and live the life of, of the customer um, is going to take you a long way um, in either of the scenarios. Um, especially in B2B where you have broader, you may have broader set of, uh, of personas than B2C. Um, then strong product sense, once you are done with the discovery of the problem space the customer and problem discovery at that time you know when you are exploring the solution uh, carrying a strong product sense is going to um, help you a lot so these are the common underlying principles um, between b2b and b2c uh, pming now let's talk about what's different in B2B and B2C. Um, I would say the nature of the problem. The nature of the problem may differ in B2B and B2C. Uh, B2B often is more deep pro problem space that may require niche skills, um, sometimes industry expertise. Uh, however, B2C is more broader problem space. Um, you may have broader person personas in B2C. Um, 
So I quote a few examples here, like uh, think of cloud computing, think of networking, think of security. All these requires a deeper dive as compared to the B2C problem space. Now let's talk about the product cycle. B2B often have longer product cycle and may not have uh, frequent releases. Um, so if you have patience through it, you want to go deeper into, uh, into the problem space, then B2B may suit you more. B2B is also um, many a times saturated with bigger players in market. So for any newbie, to penetrate into um, such markets requires some strategies. A uh, few examples are innovate, differentiate yourself so that you can create your own niche market. Um, so you should be prepared to kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, ready to, to uh, encounter these situations. Then data, B2C is more data driven. Uh, you will have ample of data to kind of go through it and make decisions which are backed by data. But in B2B, data may be limited. Um, it may be qualitative, but still limited. So often at times, you know, product sense uh, helps, helps uh, kind of moving ahead in those situations where data is limited. The next point I listed here is communication. Communication is an essential skill for PM in either case, but in B2B, it's more crucial. The reason is you will be having a more larger portfolio of stakeholders, internal teams, external team, cross, uh, you know, um, our team, um, global team, and most of the time, the flexibility um, is limited in B2B space, which means um, you have to go through tougher negotiations to get everyone on one roadmap, having consents from everyone. So that requires elevated communication skills. And also the personality, I would say, if you are more towards relationship oriented, then result oriented, then this is something um, you may want to explore. Um, B2B requires investment in long-term relationship, um, especially, you know, with the sales counterpart. Make him an ally of yours. Um, it's going to help you personally to be successful in, 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 in the company. So, Long-term relationship and working closely with the teams, um, building close relationship that actually um, helps in B2B space. Um, B2B often requires deep and niche technical skills, which I already touched upon. Um, networking, security, cloud com computing, or maybe, you know, deep uh, industry expertise. Um, that um, would be required in B2B as compared to B2C. Also monetizing strategies may differ. So in terms of monetization, um, if you're addressing the customer problem in the right way, the willingness to pay is more. With B2C, your product sometimes may fall into commodity market. There is always like, you know, uh, you have to come up with a competitive pricing strategy um, to to gain the market share. However, in B two B, you can you can try different pricing strategy. It could be subscription based. It could be a la carte. It could be you know um, premium. Uh, 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 you know. Uh, uh, versions with niche features, upsell, cross-sell. So there are different strategies that you could play on based on your expertise. However, contrary, B2C is more broader problem space. It's more consumer-facing. 
um, sometimes UX heavy, you would be paying more on volumes. Um, frequent release cycles are often observed and also opportunity to take feedback from end customer as you are delivering and lots of data and sitting with the CS team that you could leverage to finalize your product strategy. Overall, I would say if you have a tendency to go deeper into, into problem space, if you are a strong communicator, um, if you are passionate about technology, and if you, are, you have background in some um, technical space, um, by personality, you are relationship oriented, um, then probably B2B is a space that you may want to give it a try. Now let's talk about switching between B2B versus B2C PME. Yeah, if you started on one and you are thinking, okay, uh, would I be able to switch? Yes, that is very much feasible. I have done it in past um, a few times. Uh, more important is to have that underlying uh, product principle strong and clear. So if you are a strong PM, probably you know switching is not a uh, not an issue here. However, I should be um, honest, as the market is shifting, what I am observing is that nowadays more uh, expertise are required in either scenario. So if um, you are building a career, your career track probably would be good to focus on certain expertise that you want to build as, 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 as the track of your career, which are going to kind of help you um, you know uh, moving forward and uh, in terms of switching i would say a change of mindset is required on overall how we approach the problem and in b2b probably um keeping yourself and your team more nimble and flexible to upcoming changes is going to help uh, in b2c you have more flexibility how you move in b2 uh, B, there may be, you know, um, uh, certain scenarios when you have to kind of make some sacrifices. Um, so how you approach the problem is different. The change of mindset is required. But other than that, yes, it's feasible to switch between B2B and B2C PM, PMing. Now let's talk about some cultural differences here. Um, how the culture differs between an organ organization who is more B2B versus B2C? The first one is B2B may be more sales driven. The reason is, um, see partners who have bigger share of pie, who are bringing more business, they often comes with customized requests. And if those requests are not managed well, then that may lead your application to get a handful of the customer. And in those scenarios, the application may not be fit or may not be competitive to kind of to be launched to a broader market. Over time, the company actually, instead of being customer focused, may we become more sales driven or more delivery driven and uh, for any new idea to try to do a short experiment in such scenarios going back and doing it would not be possible without impacting a sheer amount of your development um, so that is something to kind of keep a record on and there are strategies um, to avoid those situations which I'm going to discuss in next slide. Um, but before I touch the next point of innovation, um, I want to share an, um, my own experience working with, with a company. So I was working in a startup and I myself have observed that 
um, there were a couple of very strong partners uh, who were driving business and um, sometimes um, in time pressure or under fear of um, not losing those customers the product team was kind of taking those requests and most of the roadmap was then built by the customers uh, in collaboration with the sales team and slowly I was noticing that how the product managers were shifting towards pro, uh, you know project management mostly the roadmap was preset and they were holding hands with their inch counterpart to run the development cycle and in terms of innovation um, most of the time what competitors had launched just trying one or two add-ons on the existing features but that is not going to give the company a leap to differentiate or to stand or be customer focused so this is something to be vigilant about and as i already touched innovation may stifles in those scenarios another reason is if you have customized versions multiple versions then experimenting or implementing something um, may not be you know uh, may not be uh, feasible and that requires some cost product roadmaps in b2b includes investment in long-term relationship building so you will be seeing features like customer loyalty and retention also um please keep um in mind that technology integration adds another layer of complexity um it may be a cross platform integration with your partners it may be a cross cloud or hybrid or so and so forth so that often requires deep and niche technical skills uh, or at least the ability to kind of ramp up quickly in those technologies now consider the scenario if you want to go global in B2B. So if you are going global in B2B, localization is often required. More catering to the needs of local market. Um, you have to make the audience feel that you understand their culture. And also the customers and personas are diverse in B2B as compared to B2C. You may have different personas, you have multiple persona. And uh, not to forget to list down the B2B to C as one of your customer because if you are catering the needs of your B2B to C well, you are actually helping your customers really well. So this is something not to be missed. okay um, before i go to this slide if you have any questions comment you can um just um, add it offline in the chat and i will try to answer those after after this presentation i just uh put something quick this time uh, but i'm also going to join or on july 18 on a qa session um so irrespective of b2b or b2c any question that you have in fact i have uh, more experience in b2c so you can bring any pm questions and i, I would try to answer as per my ability okay with that let's talk about how to keep product all more focused and innovative what are the strategies you can take how to lead um, and innovate in b2b space first one as i already mentioned close relationship especially with your sales counterpart if internal teams are your partner then it may be your tech counterpart um, that is personally going to help you more um, those close relationship uh, helps to kind of unblock many things early in the stages uh, so being an ally um, of, of your um, counterpart and keeping them on your side is going to go long term Second is invest in building relationship with your client. So you need not to always go through your sales team to interact with your client. 
and especially if you are a people manager and you have a team you have to make sure that your team is close to the customer um it's okay to attend some sales call with your same sales team um if possible um interact directly to kind of uh, collect the requirements you can also form user group for your research team or for your um design team to work with the customers so these are the ways how you can bring your team close to the client and try to work directly um cs is another um uh, way also to avoid kind of building up product which is so close to a few customers is to make a diverse user group so that you can hear their voice in early venues and you can steer those through as you build your mvp you put your blueprint together uh, so make a diverse group uh, just do not focus on handful of the customers and keep a percentage of investment for new ideas and experiment i share another example with you here so i spoke about the company and keeping the company innovative and customer focus is not just going to help the company overall but also going to keep your own team inspired so in one of the um, company i have noticed that as the leadership decided to pause um on new ideas and investment and kind of um adding uh to what has already been launched and catering to the customized request over time like 6 8 months there was a good attrition especially from from the design function um they were not seeing it so inspiring you know all the new ideas experiment learning quickly going and moving uh so slowly we have seen that the company was losing really a good know how and talent uh so this goes to 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 the leaders as well it's a good tip to keep some percentage of investment on new ideas and experiment it may be 10 20 30 depending on the uh tolerance level of your company and broadcast it broadcast it truly in your all hands and to your stakeholders as well um the next point is build consolidated road map across all stakeholders and broadcast it early so if you have multiple partners it essential to provide that visibility and make a consolidated road map so that they know what is going to cut if we run on um you know uh, um any sort of resource crunch or time crunch and why uh, you know those are the problem that we are addressing in the road map plus making them part of this journey of road mapping even if you broadcast it at the end of your quarter in your all hands meeting it it may no it may not land that well as compared to if you make them part of it you give them those white spaces to internalize on uh, the uh road map give you feedbacks um and go through those discussion of not incorporating or cooperating their request there's also a, a good reason of doing that because you will get a early chance of seeking a collective intelligence from all your stakeholders plus sense early signs of misalignment and you can manage them through uh so it, um i would say it's 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 a very um a uh, good tip that i could share from my experience to kind of keep that visibility on and take them through this road mapping uh, exercise provide them that visibility now the next one is define entry milestones especially for b2b because often time the as i said the product cycles are long and 
um, what happens is, uh, over time, if it's taking few months, your stakeholders and your leadership may get curious of how we are progressing. So if you define certain milestone, you are providing the visibility of all the effort that your team is putting together. And having that sensitivity, uh, you know, uh, towards towards your team is really essential for a, for a leader to be successful. Uh, many times I have seen really talented people just working in silos and uh, their effort is not kind of brought through or came in, li uh, came in light. So it's essential if you define those milestones and then celebrate it, generate a report or broadcast it. Then the last one, take a conservative approach on customized request. Because that is going to bring long term consequences on maintenance costs, on versioning. If you're not sure of taking a request, run an exploration phase. Just tell your partner, okay, I'm going to run an exploration phase and come up with my findings to you. And do that. You know, whether you are going to take it or not going to take it, at least you get time to kind of think through it. Um, so, and again, um, it's very essential in a B2B space that you do not take that pressure. Their request may be legitimate, their request may, may um, uh, help to boost uh, the product or may incur more cost or whatever it is. You know, it's no harm asking to run a exploration phase. And that way you can discuss with your teams, you can take their feedback, inputs, and you may have an ocean of solution to kind of, kind of, you know, uh, select from. So that is something I also do, uh, you know, whenever I'm not sure of going ahead with any, any of the request. Um, with that, I'm going to conclude. Again, um, if you have any question, just shoot a, uh, you know, shoot it in chat or um, join my uh, July 18 uh, QA session. I will try to answer it as per my abilities and based on my experience. And just a quick wrap up on what we have covered. I uh, I built this uh, deck, uh, you know this deck quickly so uh, we did cover the good ground we discussed uh, required skills um, for b2b and b2c pme uh, the culture differences in both the organization and the complexity associated with b2b uh, we also discussed how one could innovate and lead in b2b uh, product states and what could be the pitfalls that you should be aware of and how you could uh, navigate through the strategies uh, you could try. Um, with that, I am just signing off. So thanks everyone for uh, joining today. Thanks.